Hello and welcome back to InResponse EDH. Thank you for once again joining us. My name is Albert and today we have another great Commander gameplay video for you. On this episode we have Jose returning with his Dragon Lord Ojutai deck. He keeps an opening hand of Karmic Guide, Soul Ring, Archaeomancer, Hedron Archive, Sphinx Mindbreaker, Path to Exile, and an Island. I'm going second and this time it's my turn to pilot the Eldrazi Terror. I keep an opening hand consisting of Hedron Archive, Emrakul the Promised End, Unwinding Clock, Ugin the Ineffable, Eldrazi Temple, War Room, and a Dark Steel Citadel. Up next and new to the channel, we have our friend Maul, and he'll be playing my Golos God Tribal deck. He keeps an opening hand of Fayborough Elder, God Eternal Ronis, Shatter the Sky, Teferi's Protection, Farseek, Orzhov Guildgate, and a Wooded Bastion. Going last and also new to the channel, we have Mike playing his Atraxa Super Friends deck. He keeps an opening hand of Oath of Nyssa, Soul Ring, Teferi Time Raveler, Narset Transcendent, Chromatic Lantern, Verdant Catacombs, and a Branch Loft Pathway. Now that we're done with the intros, let's start the game. Jose starts the game by playing a Command Tower and playing a Turn 1 Soul Ring. I play an Eldrazi Temple as my first land of the game and pass the turn. Maul draws a card, plays a tapped Orzhov Guildgate, and passes the turn to Mike. Mike plays a Branch Loft Pathway and plays his own Turn 1 Soul Ring and passes the turn to Jose. Jose starts turn 2 by playing an Island, tapping both lands in his Soul Ring for 4 mana to cast a Hedron Archive. Me not wanting to miss out on being one of the cool kids, draws a Soul Ring and casts it. I play a War Room as my land for turn and pass the turn to Maul. Maul takes his turn by not playing the Soul Ring, but instead playing a Far Seek and ramping to try to keep up with the table. As he searches his library for a stomping ground, he passes a turn to Mike. Mike taps 3 mana to play a Chromatic Lantern. He then drops a Verdant Catacombs as his land for turn, taps it for green mana thanks to the Chromatic Lantern, and plays an Oath Anissa. He looks at the top 3 cards of his library, searching for either a creature, land, or planeswalker from among them. He chooses a Wooded Foothills and puts the rest on the bottom of his library. Jose untaps, draws a card, and misses his land drop. Fortunately, he has enough mana to cast his commander, Dragon Lord Ojitai. After that, he passes a turn to me. I untap, draw a card, and play a Dark Steel Citadel as my land. I tap 5 mana to play a Forsaken Monument. Maul taps 3 mana to play a Cultivate, searching up a mountain to the battlefield tap and a forest to his hand. Mike plays an upside down bark channel pathway to symbolize that he's actually playing a tide channel pathway, which I don't totally agree with, but to each their own. He then taps 6 mana to cast Teferi Temporal Archmage. He removes 1 loyalty counter to untap 2 lands a Chromatic Lantern, and a Soul Ring. He then uses 4 mana to cast Narset Transcendent. He uses Narset's plus 1 ability to look at the top card of his library and reveals a Deploy the Gate Watch and puts it into his hand. Jose starts turn 4 by missing another land drop he moves into combat and swings at Teferi, taking out the Planeswalker. On his second main phase, he taps 4 mana to play Thassa Deep Dwelling. He uses Thassa's ability to exile Ojitai, returning it to the battlefield untapped. I untap, draw a card, and play a Haunted Fengraft as my land for turn. With the Forsaken Monument giving me an extra colorless mana from each of my permanents, 
I play a Hedron Archive and follow it up by casting my commander, Kozilek, the Great Distortion. This allows me to draw four cards, bringing my total back up to seven cards in hand. The monument also gains me four life, since I played two colorless spells this turn. Maul untaps and draws a card. Maul starts his turn off by playing the forest, and tapping out to play his commander, Golos, Tireless Pilgrim. When he enters the battlefield, he allows Maul to search his library for a land card. Maul chooses a maze's end and puts it to the battlefield tapped. Mike draws a card and plays a plains as his land for turn. He then uses Narset's minus two ability to give his next instant or sorcery spell, Rebound. Mike taps six mana to cast Deploy the Gate Watch with Rebound allowing him to search the top seven cards of his library and put up to two Planeswalker cards from among them onto the battlefield. He finds a Soren Grim Nemesis and a Tamio the Moon Sage. He uses Tamio's plus one ability to tap down my commander. He then uses Soren's plus one ability to reveal the top card, which is the Birds of Paradise, dealing one damage to each of his opponents. He taps his Chromatic Lantern for one green mana to cast Birds of Paradise. Jose starts turn 5 by drawing a card and still not finding a land. He moves straight into combat and attacks Mike for 5. Mike decides to block with his Birds of Paradise, not allowing Jose to use Ojitai's Anticipate ability. With nothing else, he passes a turn to me. I untap draw a card, play a Seagate Wreckage as my land for turn, I then cast Emrakul at the Promised End and choose to take control of Mike's next turn. After that, I cast a Solemn Simulacrum and search up a basic waste to the battlefield. Maul starts his turn by playing a Faber or Elder. He then moves into combat and swings at Soren with his Golos, knocking him down to four loyalty. I now control Mike's turn, and I started off by choosing not to play any Planeswalkers with the Deploy the Gate Watch. <laughs> yeah, these are all going to the bottom. Okay. You didn't find one Planeswalker on the top oh, yeah. seven? That's interesting. <laughs> I use Tamio's minus two ability and target Mike with it since he has no tapped creatures. I crack his verdant catacombs, making him lose one life and failing to find a land. Then I cast Teferi Time Raveler from his hand and use his minus three ability to return Mike's Chromatic Lantern to his hand and draw a card. I play a Wooded Foothills as his land for turn and also crack it without searching for a land, making him lose one life. After that, I use Soren's second ability to remove the remaining four loyalty from Soren to deal four damage to Teferi. Mike should have gained four life here, but we somehow missed it. Next, I use Narset's minus two ability, but don't cast any incense or sorceries, dropping her down to three loyalty. I then tap his soul ring just to make sure I used up all his mana and pass the turn back to Mike. Mike starts his turn, draws a card, plays a swamp as his land for turn, he activates Narset's plus one ability and reveals a Swords to Plowshare off the top of his deck. He casts it, 
targeting Kozlik, I return Kozlik to the command zone, and it gains me 14 lives thanks to the monument giving him a plus two, plus two buff. Mike's not done trying to get his revenge on me, so he uses Tamiya's plus one ability to tap down my Emrakul and keeping her from untapping on my next turn. He then replays the Chromatic Lantern, but before it can resolve, Jose casts an Arcane Denial, countering it and allowing him to draw an additional card next turn. Jose draws his two cards, and taps five mana for a Cloud Blazer. As Cloud Blazer enters the battlefield, he gains two life and draws two more additional cards. He finally finds his third land for the game. Minamo, school at water's edge. He then moves the combat and swings his commander at Maul, dealing five commander damage and allowing him to look at the top three cards and put one in his hand and the rest to the bottom of his library. On his end step, Jose uses Thassa Deep Dwelling to exile the Cloud Blazer, allowing him to draw two more cards and gain two more life. He now has to discard four cards and passes a turn. I untap, draw my card, and play a Mystic Forge which allows me to play artifacts and colorless non-land cards off the top of my deck. I look at the top of my deck, play a Thespian Stage as my land for turn, I then play an Everflowing Chalice and kick it for 6. At this point, I believe it was around 2 a.m. and 6 hours into our stream when I make the mistake of thinking I only kicked the chalice for 3. And not to mention, all the life gain I missed from the Forsaken Monument. I tap the chalice in my Hedron Archive to play a Dreamstone Hedron. I then tap the Hedron for 4 colorless mana to cast Karn, the Great Creator. I use Karn's plus one ability to make my Mystic Forge into a 4-4 creature, but choose not to attack. Instead, I send my 4-4 sad robot at Tamio, finishing her off. With nothing else to do, I end my turn. Maul starts his turn by tapping five mana for a privileged position, giving all his permanents Shroud. He chooses not to attack and passes a turn to Mike. Mike drops a mana confluence as his land for turn. He once again uses Narset's plus one ability to reveal a Jace the Mind Sculptor off the top of his deck. He then pays four mana to play the Jace the Mind Sculptor, taking one damage off the mana confluence. He uses Jace's Brainstorm ability to draw three cards then put two cards from his hand back on top of his library. Mike casts a mana crypt from his hand and remembers that Oh shoot, this can't activate. Yeah. Son of a biscuit in the house. Jose starts his turn, draws a card and untapped, and drops a ghost quarter, and rushes into combat, dealing 7 damage to Karn. With Karn off the battlefield, he's allowed to use his mana rocks, which allows him to cast Chancellor of the Spires. As it enters the battlefield, he gets to choose a target instant or sorcery from an opponent's graveyard and play without paying its mana cost. He chooses the Cultivate in Maul's graveyard. On his end step, he uses Thassa to blink the Chancellor, allowing him to copy the Cultivate one more time, putting another island on the battlefield and a plains to his hand. I start my turn by putting down a Waste, and tapping 12 mana to recast my commander for the second time, which refills my hand by letting me draw four cards. I move to combat and swing Emrakul and my Solemn Simulacrum at Jose for 19 damage. Jose blocks Emrakul with the Chancellor, but still takes eight damage from the Trample, along with four damage from the Solemn Simulacrum. I follow that up 
by casting Ugin the Spirit Dragon. I used Ugin's second ability, paying 5 into it, to exile all colored permanents. Converted mana costs 5 or less. In response, Maul attempts to cast Teferi's Protection, but I counter it with Kozilek's ability, discarding a Skyclave Relic. Still in my second main phase, I cast a Planar Bridge for 6 mana. After that, I pass my turn to Maul. He pays 3 mana to cast a District Guide, searching up an Izzet Guildgate to the battlefield tapped. He then pays his remaining 3 mana to cast that Azusa Lost But Seeking. With nothing else, he passes a turn. On Maul's end step, Mike cycles a Zagoth Triumph to draw a card. At the beginning of Mike's upkeep, he rolls a dice and doesn't take any damage from the Mana Crypt. He then taps 7 mana to cast Garrick, Apex Predator. He chooses to target Emrakul with his minus 3 ability, destroying it and gaining him 15 life. Jose starts turn 8 by playing the planes, as his land drop this turn. He then casts Return to Dust, targeting my Planar Bridge and Forbidden Monument. I use Kozilek's ability to counter it, discarding an unwinding clock. Jose then taps 4 mana to play an Archaeomancer, choosing to bring the return to dust back to his hand. He then uses his Ghost Quarter to destroy one of his islands to search up a plains to the battlefield untapped and recast the return to dust. It resolves and Exile's Forsaken Monument and my Planar Bridge. After that, Jose passes a turn to me. I start my turn by playing a Mirror Pool as my land drop. I take a quick look at the top of my deck with the Mystic Forge. Then activate Ugin's first ability, dealing 3 damage to Garrick the Apex Predator. I then cast what was on top of my library, Meteor Golem. As it enters the battlefield, I target Jose's Hedron Archive. I then move to combat, swing my commander at Jose for 12 damage. Jose is unable to block since Kozilek has Menace and takes 12 commander damage. I follow that up by playing Ugin the Ineffable. I use Ugin's minus 3 ability to kill off the Archaeomancer, putting Ugin at 1 loyalty. Maul taps 7 mana to exile the top 3 cards of his library with his commander Golos and play them without paying their mana costs. He finds a Scarab God, Erebos God of the Dead, and a Sylvan Carry added and puts him to the battlefield. With nothing else, he passes a turn. Mike once again wins the die roll off his mana crypt and doesn't take 3 damage. He plays a Vault of Champions as his land for turn. He taps 5 mana to play Teferi, Hero of Dominaria. He chooses to use Teferi's minus 3 ability to tuck Ugin back into my library, third from the top. He follows that up by playing an Oath of Ajani. He ends his turn after that. On Mike's end step, I sacrifice the Mirror Pool to make a copy of the Meteor Golem. As a token copy enters, I target Jose's soul ring and destroy it. Turn 9 starts with Jose playing Karmic Guide. When it enters the battlefield, he returns the Archaeomancer to the battlefield. When the Archaeomancer returns to the battlefield, he brings back the Return to Dust to Jose's hand. With nothing else he can do, he ships the turn to me. I untap, draw a card and then look at the top card of my library with the Mystic Forge. I tap my Soul Ring and the Hedron Archive to sacrifice it to draw two cards. I 
I then tap 8 mana to recast everyone's favorite dragon, Eugene. I again choose to remove 5 loyalty counters, exiling all colored permanents with converted mana cost 5 or less. I move into combat and swing Kozilek at Jose, dealing 12 more points of commander damage, taking him out of the game. And swing my 2 meteor golems at Mike, dealing 6 damage. On my second main phase, I cast a Hangerback Walker for 3. After that, I pass my turn to Maul. He activates Golos ability one more time, but only finding an Azorius Guildgate and Idyllic Tutor. As he searches his library, Mike takes his turn. He rolls for the Mana Crypt on his upkeep, and loses, taking 3 damage. Mike taps 4 mana to play a Teferi, Master of Time. He chooses to use his plus 1 ability to draw a card and discard a card. With nothing left to do, he passes a turn. On his end step, I sacrifice my Haunted Fengraf return a creature card at random from my graveyard. I only have one creature in my graveyard, which is Emrakul, so I return Emrakul to my hand. Mike activates Teferi's plus one ability to draw and discard a card on my turn, trying to find an answer. I use Ugin's plus two ability to shoot Teferi for three damage. I move to combat and swing my Solemn Simulacrum at Teferi to finish it off. I attack Mike with both golems, and I attack Maul with Kozilek. Neither player can block, so Mike takes 6 damage, and Maul takes 12 commander damage. I cast Emrakul for the second time. Seeing the writing on the wall, the table scoops it up. Congratulations to me and my boy Kozilek. I really love how explosive this deck is and how much fun it is to play. I think I really benefited from Mike playing a Super Friends deck and getting out to an early lead. Everyone hates playing against that deck, so the focus was off of me until I took a commanding lead and never looked back. Jose may have been a little greedy keeping a one land hand, but despite being mana screwed for much of the game, he was able to show off a little bit of what his deck can do constantly blinking his creatures or recurring the same spells over and over again for value. He definitely was the biggest threat to me in the late game, which is why I had to focus most of my resources on him. But please, don't keep one land hands. Maul is fairly new to Commander, but he has had some success piling my Golos deck. The joke in our playgroup being, he does better with it than I do. But this game was on a slower side. His draws didn't help him much, he couldn't find any of his mana doublers or removal to progress his own board, and multiple Ugin board wipes didn't help his cause much either. Mike's Super Friends deck jumped out to a scary lead, which really painted a bullseye on his back with the rest of the table. But what really set him back was getting his turn taken with Emrakul so early on in the game. His battlefield was left in shambles, and from then on, he could only rebuild one walker at a time. And once he started rebuilding, Ugin would just wipe the board again which kept him from being able to build a commanding board state the rest of the game. We here at In Response would like to thank you for watching and supporting us. Please like and subscribe and follow us on our social media. And don't forget to join us on Twitch every Friday night at 7 p.m. Pacific Standard Time for live Commander gameplay. Thank you and have a wonderful day.